King of Kings. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. I don't know whether worship team, you can just do the, the, the theme song. The, just the, I don't know, the bridge or the, the, um, the chorus. Yes. Stanza for a minute. Bona sifiwe. Bona sifiwe. As they do that, my name is Jeff Njuguna and I'm born again. I'm a member of this church. Uh, a member of the Ablaze youth, min youth team. And a man of integrity. Proudly so. Thank you, my fellow uh, brothers in the men of integrity. Um, I, I, I thank God for this opportunity. And before I go far, I just want to... Um, I see they are still consulting. I want to thank God for this opportunity just to be here to, uh, to be used as a vessel, uh, to, uh, just as a mouthpiece of God. I'm not the one speaking, but the Spirit of the Lord is at work speaking and ministering to each and every soul. I thank the Father of the house, the angel of the Lord over this church, our bishop. I, I thank God for the vision in this church. I came to this church when I was broken and I was down and almost out, but I thank God for the vision in this church. I can stand here and minister the gospel. Buenas, if you and, and mom in absentia, I, I, I really appreciate uh, the, the, our parents and thank uh, the youth ministry. It's been a wonderful week in the Harvest Conference 2018. Hallelujah. Buenas, if you it's been wonderful. Reverend Francis, Pastor Mwashi, Joy and the rest of the team, uh, RC and everyone, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful team. We thank God for everything. The theme has been, the theme has been here as it is in heaven. Uh, uh, from our, from our, of course, our, our, our deliverance church theme, uh, Kingdom Manifestation. And um, I just want to welcome you, Washi. Just... Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason to encounter, to encounter your love, your love surrounds Overflow in this place, overflow in this place. Overflowing, fill our hearts, fill our hearts with your love. Your love surround. You're the reason we came. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Encounter your love. Your love. Your love. Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Spirit of God, fall fresh. fresh oh, we need your presence. We need your presence. Say your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your will. Be Hear us in heaven. Hear us. We'll cry out one more time. Jesus, Spirit of the Living God, with not only 
seek your presence in this place. But we seek an overflow of your presence. An overflow of your presence, Spirit of the living God. Come and fill this place. Fill this place, Spirit of the living God. And minister unto each and every soul. Minister unto us, Lord. Minister unto us, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, let your kingdom come. Let Here as it is in heaven. Come. Praise Jesus. Appreciate Jesus as you appreciate the worship team. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. We thank God. We thank God for each one of them. As you have your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I said I'm Jeff. Uh Outside the ministry work, I also am a real estate consultant, and I bless the Lord for that. Before I continue, I would like to just appreciate one or two people, a special group of people that uh, heard that I was ministering the gospel this morning, and they decided to join us. If you are not a member of this church and you know you came because I asked you to, um, or rather you, I told you I'm ministering and you came, just rise on your feet, rise on your feet. Hallelujah. I appreciate those people. I thank God. I thank God. Uh, special people. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, in this city I have, I have two moms. One of, one of them is the mother in this house. And then I have a mother mom just, just yeah, with the congregation. I, I thank God, Judy, Ken, and Margaret. I thank God for you guys. Um, these are the guys at least who have known me for probably longer than any one of us who belong here. And I thank will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of living, or rather a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. But Jesus said to her, you have said well that you have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have is not your husband. In that, you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we, one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, I believe, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor, nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all these things. Jesus said to her, I, I who you Speak to, I am he. And this point, at this point, the disciples came and they marveled that Jesus talked to a woman, yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. Let's stop there for now. Father God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for gathering us in your, in, in your presence. In this table, Lord, that you have made this morning, God, I pray that, Lord, the bread of life, Lord, even as you took that, 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 those, those, those pieces of, of, of bread from that boy and you broke it down and thousands were fed, I pray that you may take your word this morning and, Lord God Almighty, using the Holy Spirit and as I as a vessel, break it down for us, oh God, that each one of us may have satisfaction, Lord, whether it's for reproof, for correction, for instruction in wisdom, whatever it is, Lord. And I surrender myself, Spirit of the living God, to be used of you. I pray that I speak none of my opinions, but your oracles and your oracles only. Spirit of the living God, I offer myself to be used of you. Minister unto me, even as you minister unto your people. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Here is a story. Um, that is one of those uh, encounters of Jesus that are recorded in the book of John. And I love the book of John for what it shows Jesus to be as the son of God, as God himself. And there is a story here of a woman who, who uh, Jesus uh, uh, trying, um, Jesus escaping the, 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 the controversies that were that are going on 
with their, just go back to verse 1, um, the, the controversies that are going on when the, when the Pharisees realize that Jesus has come, is baptizing, and the, these people expected a different kind of a, a, a thing. They expected that when the Messiah will come, he will talk, take over from the Roman Empire, and you know, that is for the idea of kingdom come. That the Messiah would come and take over the kingdom and just make the Jews to be rulers, and now from, the, from, from, from offering taxes to the Roman, then they would now collect taxes from, you know, they expected a whole different scenario. And then, and, 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 and so anyone who talked about the coming of the Messiah, including the John the Baptist, they took him and bound him. And so Jesus came and then all of a sudden they are surprised. They are surprised. They thought they had silenced the move of God. They had silenced the move of God and, 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 and they had bound John the Baptist. But now Jesus comes and they, the Pharisees said that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. And, and so they, they brought up a controversy. And this is the, the I see this as, 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 as a reflection of people who are caught up in a religion, you know, people who are caught up in a religion, you know, a form of worship but denying its, you know, a form of godliness but denying its power thereof. And so this was for them such, such, such a such a source of trouble, and they were really and greatly troubled. So when Jesus comes into the picture, they are totally, you know, they are totally frustrated. And so they started fighting and all these things, and, and, and Jesus just decided to escape from them. And, 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 I, and I am thinking that when, whenever someone is caught, caught up in a form of godliness, but denying its power thereof, what, they, what those people do is contradictions and, and conflicts and comparisons and, 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 and they are trying to do all this. But, but this this is not true worship the, 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 because Jesus coming into their midst in the Messiah, but their religion and their form of godliness just bound them from, from seeing Jesus. And, and this reminds me of if moving forward, John chapter 9, if you could give me John chapter 9, verse 35, if you could give me that. And, and, and Jesus has another encounter yet again with these people. Je um, uh, Jesus had just healed a blind man and, you know, he made mud and smeared in the eyes and told the guy go and wash and the guy was, well, but it was on a Sabbath. That was the problem. Their religion would not allow them to do that. It would, it, someone would rather die than them break the law of Sabbath. So they get this, they, they, they get this guy and they just start questioning him and frustrating him. So when Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the son of God? Continue. He answered and said, who is the Lord that I may believe in him? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 35 to 41. Yes, yes. And Jesus said to him, you have both seen and it's he who is talking to you, with you. Continue. Then he said, Jesus, I believe. And he worshipped him. Continue. And Jesus said, for a judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may be made blind. Let's stop from there. And, and, and this is Jesus having an encounter with the people again who are, who are entangled in religion, who are entangled in a form of godliness, but denying its power thereof. But Jesus is rebuking them and telling them, uh, I came that those who see may become blind. And those who are blind may see. Jesus is trying to tell them, I'm bringing a new, you know, I'm, I'm bringing, and I remember uh, uh, Dan Gishana when he was preaching in the conference, he said that uh, kingdom of God is about a new shift. It's about a new thing. And, and, and this, is what, um, Jesus, this is what Jesus is saying. And I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. Quickly. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. But go and learn what this means. And I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Let's proceed. As Jesus passed from there, he saw a man named Matthew at the tax office and said to him, follow me. That's not the scripture I was looking for. But this is a story. This is a story that, that Jesus, where, where Jesus, um, where Jesus, where, where the, the disciples of John and the Pharisees, they came and told Jesus, you know, your disciples are not fasting. But, our, but, but, but you know, but we, the, the disciples of John and the Pharisees are always in a fast. And, 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 and this, sorry, it's amazing how Jesus replies. And I wish I, I, I would get that. Go to verse 15 of that, John 9. I hope it is the one. Verse 15. 
Now, so there was this controversy. That's the verse I'm looking for. There was this controversy. Why do uh, we, the disciples of John, uh, and the Pharisees also fast, but your disciples don't? Just give me the, the message version. The message version, verse 15. And this is, the, this is the classic and the most, I think, awesome thing that Jesus replied to them. And he said, Jesus told them, when you are celebrating a wedding, you do not skimp on the cake and wine. Praise the living, of, praise the living God. You do not skimp on the cake and wine. You feast. Later, you may need to pull in your belt, but not now. No one throws cold water on a friendly bonfire. This is kingdom come. And that is, if you want a topic for this sharing, you can just say, this is kingdom come. Jesus says that, you know, you are entangled on fasting and all these things. It's just like the story of Mother and Mary. Jesus has come to visit them. And Mother is busy with all those things. And early. Jesus says, Mary has chosen the right thing. And, and that's how probably some of us are. We are entangled good in so many things, yet Jesus is here. He says, instead of focusing our eyes on him, we are entangled in so many things. We, we, we are entangled in the worries of this world, and we are forgotten to celebrate because it is a feast. When Jesus came, he did not come to bring rules and regulations to bind us. He came to bring life and life abundantly. And instead of us enjoying life and life abundantly, we are busy in the worries and the fears of this world and all these things. And Jesus is saying, and if you continue in the, in, in the next verse, it says, you do not, you know, I, I think in other versions, that you do not put old wine in new wine skins. Problem is that some of us are stuck up in the old wine. We are not willing to let Jesus bring out a new wine out of us. Because the kingdom come is about a new wine. It's about a fresh start. It's about a fresh beginning. It's about the move of God in your life. It's about allowing God to move in your life. It's about seeing in the eyes of Jesus. And in the story we are talking about the blind man, Jesus told them, now that, you know, these people said, you know, I came, the, you know, when Jesus said that I came, that those who see me may, may become blind, those who are blind may see, the, the Pharisees are asking, we are, we, we are not blind, we can see. And Jesus said, now that you say that you, are, you, you can see, you are blind. What is Jesus telling these people? That if you choose to see life outside of me, that if you choose to see life from a different angle and elevation apart from me, you are blind. Someone said that if you say succeed with, you know, if you fail without God, you fail miserably. But if you succeed without God, you fail most miserably. Because without God, if you seek, if you seek to see life out in this world, outside the lens of Christ, if Christ is not your vision, then you're not seeing. Now look at the Apostle Paul during his con conversion. You know, when, when, when this voice came and, you know, he saw a great light and, and Jesus said to uh, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me and all these things? Paul, after that, went blind. And, and, and I think it's amazing. Because Paul encountering Jesus, you, you, you would think when, 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 when God is using you, the last thing he wants to make you is blind. Because you need to go places and you remember all the journeys that Paul made. But you see, when G Paul encountered Jesus, when he saw Jesus, after that encounter before, you know, before now being moved and all this, he became blind. And, and, and this is the whole issue. Jesus had to shut Paul down from his previous life, the way he used to see life. And now Jesus shut down. You know, the moment that, that Paul became blind, that is when he began to see. The moment Paul became blind in his physical eyes, that is when the eyes of the, of the spirit were opened and he became from a persecutor and, and a murderer of brethren to the greatest apostle that we know of. And if that is the same to some of us. For you to experience kingdom come, you have to come to a point where you are, your physical person, your, your eyes of, of the person, that you know, the, the seed of Adam and Eve that has to be shut down and you begin to see life in new lenses. That is exactly what should happen. That when you meet, you know, if there was sun out here, and I like the way a friend of mine illustrates it, if you go out here and the sun is shining and you look at the sun for a long time, what will happen after that? By the time you look back, you can't see nothing. Okay, you can't see anything. But, but th th this is it. That when you, when you look at the sun of righteousness, when you focus on the sun of righteousness, everything else, the, wor the worries of this world, the fears, your own pride, your own, you know, the, the way you see your strength or your weaknesses, they become blind and you begin, you can only see the sun. You know, when you focus on the sun, S-O-N, it's just like fo focusing on S-U-N. Either way, you, if you're focusing right and if the sun, the sun is shining upon you, you'll be 
become blind, and you begin to see the world in a different perspective. And there, then, the kingdom comes. And it's a moment for us to reflect that if we want to see life rightly. If you think you can see, then you are blind. If, as young people, and I want to reach out to my fellow young people, I was, I was showing Joy that I'm young at heart still. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my fellow young people, we like seeing lives in our own way. We like doing things our own way. We think we know it all. I think Bishop shared with us sometimes back, you know, there's that age, unajua kila kitu. You know everything. And I've realized, and those people I told to stand there are my friends. They know, but when I was coming from college, from campus, I knew a lot. I, I would argue my case to death. You know, I, I, I see Newton saying, you still argue. You know, but, 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 you know, but, but, but at least as growth comes, I have, you know, I've, I have slowed down. I've realized that the younger you are, in the, the more you argue, the more you, you know, the more you hang on to your point. And this is what the Pharisees are doing. They always put Jesus to test. But now they had a bigger challenge. So let's go back to this woman. And, and, and you know, she's at, she's at the well. And, and, and Jesus is conversing with her. And Jesus, a weary dose of, you know, it's good to know that Jesus, you know, could also get weary. And he sat down on a rock and this woman came and, 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 and you know, and Jesus started a conversation. Give me a drink. And it's amazing that, you know, he who is the creator of all, you know, the heavens and the earth, the waters, the he's the fountain of living waters, would ask this woman for a drink. It's amazing the extent that God has gone to reach out to your level. How could Jesus, who could just make water out of anything, then he causes the vapors to rise from the ground. They form the clouds and the water comes down. And then he is here begging for water. The owner of everything, the creator of the universe, is here begging for water. Give me a drink. The Bible says that he was made poor, that we may become rich. He's the creator of everything. But this is kingdom come. He has come to our level. No other God, no other religion where God comes so close. In other religions, you have to do this. You have to pray five times in a day. And there are, you know, and, and there are denominations. You know, you have to observe some, you know, ash on your face. You know, you have to do this. It's a do religion. But you know what? Christianity is not just a religion. It's a relationship. And it's not a do religion. It's a done thing. Jesus said, it's finished. So quit doing. It's done. Quit. This is kingdom come. Jesus has already come. He has brought his light. And he's saying, it is done. It's finished. And he has gone the extra, extra, extra mile just to reach out to us. This is kingdom come. And so he says, give, give me a drink. And, and this woman is, is just taken back. This woman could tell this guy is a Jew from the way he looks, the way he dresses, the way he's talking. And then he says, um, go back to several verses until you get that one. You know, that how is it that you being a Jew would, 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 um, would ask me for water. For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. I, I read that and I was like, this woman, there's something she's not getting. That she's standing next to the real deal. She's saying that for Jews and, and Samaritans, we have no dealings. But this is the real deal. This is the real deal. The woman is just next to the real deal. And, you know, I pray that by the time you are, we are done, you would see the real deal. And, the, 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 she, uh, and you know, she says that we have no dealings, but the real deal is right in front of us. Let's, let's continue. And so the scriptures say, the next verse, that now the disciples has gone away, had gone away, and they came back, uh, they found Jesus talking to a Samaritan woman. And this was so shocking for them, because the last thing you want to, wanted to do as a Jew and as a man is talk to a woman who is a Samaritan? One as if you were. I have to give this example, but you will forgive me. A, a typical Jewish man would pray, Thank you, God, for I was not born a woman, a Samaritan, or a dog. That is the prayer of a typical Jewish man to date. So, for this Jewish man called Jesus to be caught speaking to a woman, and a Jew. Now you have everything else put together. And, and they, they are shocked. But you know what? This is kingdom come. And Bishop, when he's preaching on this scripture, he said, can God really use me? 
Bwana asifiwe. And I, I want to tell you this morning, this is kingdom come. That is why Jesus could reach out to such a woman. And I don't know even who you are and what you've been through, what you have done, what you are yet to do. You know, I, I, I don't know. You probably feel like you're too far from the gospel. You probably came to church because it's a ritual. You probably came to church because you're so broken. You came looking for hope. You feel so lost. You have messed up a lot. You have done, you, you know, you have aborted like seven times. I, I don't care what you have done. But I don't think you are worse in this situation than this woman. Bible says that when the, in the conversation has continued, Jesus said you have had how many husbands? Five. You know when you're not very sure, you ask the congregations that if you fail, you fail together. You know, you know five husbands. You've had five husbands. And, and, and you know, and, 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 and look at her. And now, apart from being a, a, a Samaritan, a woman, she's also practicing the old, the very most old known profession. And, 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 and this is her. And she encounters Jesus. And then she, she begins to say, you know, you know um, and when Jesus says this, she realizes, you know, that, that, that this is big. This is happening. And, 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 and one amazing thing that happens is that in this conversation with Jesus, the Bible says, if you go, um, um, proceed, proceed, the next verse our fathers worship on this mountain and you just say in Jerusalem is the place where one or two worship. Continue. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither worship on this mountain or, nor in Jerusalem. Continue. You worship you, what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Continue. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And the Father is seeking such to worship. Continue. God is spirit, and those who worship, he must worship in spirit and truth. Continue. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Continue. Next verse. The next verse. This is amazing. Verse number 28. The Bible says, the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city. And, you know, go, went preaching. You know, this is amazing. This woman, in the trade that she is in, one of the things, one of the, you know, one of the tools of trade is that you have to look nice, you have to smell nice, you have to be well washed up and everything. This is the trade she is doing. And she has come to draw water. I, I think she's come to draw water to go and freshen up and go to her trade. Yes? That, that's, that's the business she has come to do. But now she meets Jesus. After this conversation with Jesus, she left her water pot. I'm, I'm thinking it's like a farmer leaving her jebe. This is like a doctor leaving her those things. <laughs> you know, there was that thing was going on. You know, how doctors listen to what? You know, you know I don't know whether it's to soul music. You know, you know, you know it's like the dog, you know, she left her water pot. And this was amazing. And for me, this is what worship is. This is the point where this woman became a worshiper. This is when kingdom came upon her. She left her water pot and went. And I pray that this morning someone can just leave whatever baggage, whatever it is that you, you feel is so precious to you, that you can just lay it down there and go to, to witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is worship. Worship is when you turn from yourself and you focus on Jesus. This woman used to draw men to herself. That was her trade. Drawing men. Five men is not a joke. We are used to polygamous in Africa. This is, what is the opposite of polygamy? It's the same. When a woman has five husbands, one husband has polyandry. Hey, my good. Thank you, Dr. Arya. Asante. You know, these five men, man, that's not a joke. She used to draw men to herself and she was successful in, in, in it. But now she's a changed woman. She's drawing the Samaritan men to Jesus. Now that's worship. Now that is true worship. That is true worship. And you realize you're a worshiper when focus in life shifts from being about you and becomes about Jesus. That's when you realize you are a worshiper. Worshipper is not how much you speak in tongues, how much you kneel and roll on the ground as the worship is going on. Worship is not, you know, worship is, it's just getting yourself out of the way. 
something like that. You know, you get yourself out of the way and let Jesus be the center of your focus. Draw men unto Jesus. That is worship. She used to draw the Samaritan. These are not even Jews men. You know, these, they are not Jewish men. These are Samaritan men. And he goes, she goes to her city and begins to draw these men unto Jesus. Now that is worship. I was sharing with some people about, you know, worship team. You know, sometimes we come and, you know, we lead people in worship and all these things. And, and I was telling them, if at all you get people's attention to, your, to yourselves, to your voices, to the band, to the instrument, that is not worship. Now I'm preaching to the choir, literally. <laughs> you, you know, that, that is not worship. Worship is when people, they don't even realize, you know, today you are too... You know, too well dressed to miss. I I know. Yeah, you you as you can't be missed today. But beyond that, at the end of the day, what does the what 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 does this congregation remember when everything is said and done? Do they remember how you are dressed? Do they remember your voices, or do, do they remember Jesus, that wonderful, you know, merciful Savior? And when you sang that song, I was like, this is it. This is kingdom come. And, and so this is worship for me. That you, you shift your eyes from yourself. You shift your eyes from your strength. You shift your eyes from your, you know, you know, you know out, outer beauty. You shift your eyes from your outer ugliness. You shift your eyes from your weaknesses. You focus your eyes on Jesus. That is what Hebrews 12, and I thank God that Hebrews was our, 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 our exposition book uh, in this conference. You know, that and now... Can you put up for me Hebrews chapter number 12 from verse 1? Therefore, since, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, now they have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, listed in chapter number 11, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily en en ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set for us. Bonas fewer. Let's proceed to the next. Looking unto Jesus, Bonas fewer. the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of Father and the, of the throne on high. For consider him who endured such hostility for sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged. Go back to verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. Again, I will refer to an illustration given to a friend of mine. You know, he likes these things. He likes these illustrations. He went down a book on, on, on devotionals. And, 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 and this is how he illustrates it. That, you know, remember those who are older than me or like me or older than me. You remember that advert that was on TV sometimes back? It was about Ribina Berry. Joy has the kubuka. It used to be there. Those, you know, the ribena berries, and they are, you know, they, they were saying in that berry, you know, every berry has to be pushed to the limit to explode so that it can produce that, you know, th that juice and stuff like that. And so, you guys remember the advert? Yeah, so, and though they, this is the one that they focus on, and it's trying to burst with goodness. It can't, it tries, it tries. Uh, if I concentrate, I can explode. It's not going to happen. Then, it happens. You know, this is the whole deal. If you want to bust out with goodness, you have to concentrate. And who are you concentrating on? Your fears, your worries, your strengths, your weaknesses. You are doing what? You are looking unto Jesus. And like that, Rabina Berry, you will just be, you bust with fruitfulness. Bon as if you will. No pun intended. With, you know, this is the whole deal. That if you want to bust out with goodness, if you want your ministry life to reach its optimum, Focus on Jesus. One as if you will. This is what this woman did. She left aside her water pot. She left her trade. She left everything that she would. This is the, was the most valuable thing in her life. One as if you will. This is kingdom come. You know, the entire scripture, it's, you know, the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's about Jesus. It's about the gospel of Christ. Someone has said that the Old Testament is a preparation of the gospel. One as if you will. When it comes to the New Testament, the, 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 the gospels is the demonstration of the gospel or the manifestation. The epistles are the explanation. The revelation is the consummation of the gospel. So the entire Bible from, from you know, Jesus was interacting with his seal on this book of John, with the Pharisees and told them, you go through scriptures thinking that, you know, thinking that you will find the truth, but you do not know the same scriptures talk about me. And remember that time, the scriptures they have is the Old Testament. They had one as if you will. 
And, and so I was looking at scriptures, just skipping through, and I'm like, this is kingdom come. These people, you know, these people had Jesus, right? These, these people had kingdom come in their own eyes, but they could not see. The God of this age has blinded them that they may not see the truth and come to it and be saved. One, as if you will. One day Jesus is just, has been invited by Jairus to go and, you know, raise up the daughter. And so Jesus sets on the way to go. And, and, and interestingly, Jesus is on the way to heal Jairus' daughter. And, and the, then this woman who had had a flow of blood for 12 good years, 12 good years, losing blood. She had tried everything else. The Bible says that she had gone to all the physicians. Now, this woman was not a poor woman. If you can, how many doctors can you see in this country and remain afloat financially? You just need to see three specialists, then you are done. Okay, if you are in my level. I, I know I'm speaking to different people. Some need to see 10. But this woman had seen every other physician. She, was, she must have been rich. And, and she decides one day, you know, she was, an out, she was not supposed to be in the midst of, but she realized this is kingdom come. One as if you And she, she's just, you know, in, in, in between people and she just reached out and she, she said, this is what amazed me about this woman. We see a lot of things about this woman, but what, what amazes this woman? She's, if I just touch the cloak, you know, the hem of his garments, one as if you were. This is amazing. This woman had a revelation. More than faith and everything. We talk about this woman as faith. But this woman, what she had is a revelation. And thank God when Bishop was preaching this, this, this particular text, he said, you just need to catch a revelation. One as if you This woman had a revelation. That I don't need to, I don't need a Jesus hug. You know the way you are sent a WhatsApp a message with a Jesus hug? Who needs that? You just need, you know, Jesus is too huge. He's too big. You just need to, Touch the edge. Yani, you, can, you, know, you know why heaven will be eternal? You know why eternity will be eternal? If there's something like that. You know why heaven will last forever? It's because, you know, in the book of Revelation, I think it's chapter number, number, number what? I think uh, the book of Revelation, um, as we conclude, chapter number four, from verse six to 11, the Bible talks about living creatures living creatures. And if you can just go there. And, and these are four of them. The Bible says that there was a, a sea of glass like crystal and in the, go to the next verse. Okay, sorry, back <laughs> to the previous verse. Uh, the Bible says, um, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. Go, back, go, go forward. The Bible says the first living creature was like a lion and second living creature like a calf, a dad like a uh, living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth like a flying eagle. Next. The Bible says uh, the four living creatures each had six wings and were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day and night. But so when we are talking of kingdom coming, we are saying this is the life we need to be living. This is the kingdom of God. This is, he, this is heaven. Now we are saying, on earth as it is in, on earth as it is in, this is heaven. They don't rest day and night saying, holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You think this, this, this need have been enslaved? You think there's a duty roster? Like you, even if there's a duty, it doesn't go day and night. You know, a duty has a resting. This is not a duty. You know why these things never cease? You know why they never stop worshipping? Because the Bible says they have eyes all over. And people have given so many reasons, the eyes in and without and in. But this is what I saw when I first read this scripture. That they have eyes all over. You know, unless you use a mirror, you can never see your face. But you can see your hand. You can, you can see other parts. Of, but so what happens when you have eyes all over? You just can't see yourself. You just behold what is in front of you. These creatures, they just behold the glory of God. One as if you and, and that's why they never cease to worship. Because he's so glorious, you never stop a moment. One as if you This is kingdom come. This is what we ought to have here on earth. So the, the scripture says that, when, you know why they never stop worship? Because by the time they, they, they try to look, they see a facet of God they worship. You know, they, they, they try to kneel again, they see another facet of God. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Who was and who is and who is to come. And the Bible says, if you go to the next verse, that when they do this, whenever the living creatures give glory, glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. Next verse. 
the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne. Bona, they, I, I feel like they induce their worship in heaven because they have so many, it's just everything they see is the glory of God. Bona, if you will. And because it's, you know, heaven will last forever because, because of this. Every moment you wake up, I don't know whether they'll be sleeping, there will be no sleeping. You know, you know, every moment you behold, you see a new face, of a new facet of God and you worship. Bona, if you will. Then you, by the time you think you're tired, you see another one and you fall down and worship. By the time you, you see another one, you it will take eternity to see the entire glory of God. One as if you will. That is why our God is eternal. You know, I, I, you know, I, I meet atheists and uh, critics and they say, you know, um, so Jesus is the son of God. So did Jesus, God has a mother, has a wife. So he's the son of God, blah, 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 all this nonsense. We were ministering with Pastor Kibera on the other hand. Foolishness. The Bible says that a fool has said in his, not in his mind. If you begin to think about God, it's mind-boggling. In fact, if you engage your mind, you will realize that, you know, you will see the sense in God. Atheism is not about the mind. And, and Daktari will tell you this. It's not the mind. He has, you know, he has gone to those levels. But atheism is about the heart. Because if you engage your mind, you will see that God is real. So this person is saying, Jesus, nee, 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 nee. And, I, and I tell them, Come on, look, your problem with God is that you can't understand him. But come on, if your God is understandable, then why worship him? He's not big enough. If you can understand your God, then he's not big enough. He's not worthy to be called God. I cannot worship someone I understand. I, you know, doctors can figure out your human anatomy. One of my spiritual sons does science, you anatomy and something. You know, you, doctors can figure that out. So you're not worthy of worship. But God, the fact that he can, we, he will take eternity for us to see the entire and the fullness of the glory of God. That is why he deserves worship. And not just in the morning, but in the noontime too, in the evening, and in between. That is our God. He deserves worship. He deserves worship. Now that is kingdom come. I want to conclude. This, Jesus told this woman, if you knew, if you knew the, the gift of God and who it is, and I tell you, Deliverance Church, Zimmerman, this morning, if you knew, let me just do one thing that every preacher will do. Tell your neighbor, if you knew. I think it would be not a complete sermon if you don't pull that one. <laughs> just pull that one. If you knew. I like the way Matthew Henry comments about Jesus. If you knew the gift of God. And who it is. This is what Matthew Henry says in his commentary. Jesus Christ is the gift of God. The richest token of God's love. The richest treasure. The richest treasure of all good for us. A gift, not a debt. Which you could, which, sorry, let me take that again. A gift, not a debt, which we could demand from God. God doesn't owe anyone anything. Jesus Christ is just a gift. And then, um, not alone, which he will demand from us again. Go and ask if you will. Jesus Christ is a gift, but a gift, a free gift. That is what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave. It's a gift. His only begotten son. For whoever, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you continue from there, most of you will be lost. A lot of us don't know what John 3.17 says. Ask your neighbor. You will realize. It is an unspeakable privilege to have this gift of God proposed and offered to us. To have an opportunity of embracing it. One has fear. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, for us, a child is born and a son is given. And that's why I differ with Catholics when they call Jesus the mother of God. The son was never born. The son was only given. One has fear. The son was only given. It is a child that was born. Because Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. And some of you are trying to understand it. You won't. If you, if, you, if you do, it's a dangerous one. Jesus Christ is a gift given to the world. I was saying about this woman, you know, she touched the 
the hem of his garment. And, and, and this is it. You know, th there's a preacher who he preached for so many years. This is a guy who, who prayed, I think, for, is he, is he called Rick Warren? Something Warren. He's a founder of a church, something Baptist. Yeah? This is the guy who, actually, Billy Graham used to, you know, to fellowship at this guy's church. This is what the guy said. I have been, his, his mode of preaching is exposition, what Reverend Francis was doing in the, in the conference, exposition. He said, I have preached Jesus for like, he started preaching when he was 12. So he said, I have preached Jesus for like 70 years and I can confess, I haven't even touched the hem of his garment. This is how big our God is. Shall we rise? For a woman who had had a flow of 12, for 12 good years, she just touched the cloak of his garment. Now that is kingdom come. That is kingdom come. I don't know how your life is, how it's messed up right now, but this is kingdom.